many in our nation would say is the Sabbath day. To each and every dignitary here, and I would say that's everybody, but to especially Brother Harry Johnson and his staff for the tireless work to make this memorial a reality. We first say thank you. Also to the Martin Luther King Foundation Board and its chair, to each and every contributor, every corporation, but perhaps most of all to the masses of Americans who chose to contribute to this effort that would not be here but by the contributions of men and women and families. So we thank each of you and every one of you. On behalf of my wife, Andrea, and our daughter, Yolanda Renee, we say thank you. Today we've come to participate in this unveiling ceremony to my father and celebrate his legacy. Let us not forget that he paid the ultimate price for our civil rights. He was a chance champion of human rights and social justice for all people, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, or nationality. We must stand up for social and economic justice. 48 years ago, my father stood in this vicinity, in the shadows of the Lincoln Memorial, and gave a speech that was to resonate around the world. He said that he had a dream that with faith in ourselves and in our country, we will be able to hew out of a mountain of despair a stone of hope. That with faith, we would be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood and sisterhood that with faith, we would be able to work together, stand up for freedom together, knowing that one day we would all be free. I repeat his words because I believe that it's important to emphasize that while it's great to have this memorial to his memory, and it's great to have a national holiday, and it's great to have streets and schools and hospitals named in his honor all over our nation and world, it is also important to not place too much emphasis on Martin Luther King, the idol, but not enough emphasis on the ideals of Martin Luther King Jr. So while we commemorate his memory today with this great memorial, let us not confuse nor forget what he stood for and died for. The young people around this nation organizing a very interesting but let us not forget the ideals he gave up his life for. Love, peace, equality, jobs, education, nonviolence, decent housing, and an end to war. The young people of the Occupy movement all over this country and throughout the world are seeking justice. Justice for the, um, the employed searching for months for jobs and those among them haven't given up in despair. Justice for working class people barely making it. Justice for middle class folks who are unable to, able to pay their mortgages. Justice for elders terrified that they're losing the value of their savings and their health care. Justice for the young people who graduate from college are unemployed and burdened by student loans they cannot repay. Justice for everyone who are simply asking the wealthy and corporations to pay their fair share. You see, sometimes we get caught up in the brand of my father, but we forget to focus on the beliefs of my father. We must stand up for social and economic justice. We as a people in this country have lost our love force, our true force. As a matter of fact, you can make this argument that we have ultimately lost our souls. We've lost our souls. When I see that a 40-year-old, 49-year-old black man, James Craig Anderson, 
was brutally murdered in Mississippi, not in 1963, but in June of 2011. We've lost our souls when I see children bullying other children and young teenagers killing each other. We've lost our souls when prisons are a growth industry, as the prisons are filled every day with more people than any other industrialized nation. There are more black and brown folks in prison than in college. That must change. We've lost our souls when the United States Supreme Court, the supreme law of the land, decided in Brown versus the Entertainment Merchants Association to strike down a state law that regulates the sale of violent video games to children. We've lost our souls when 30 years of failed public policy have reduced regressive tax breaks for the rich while breaking the backs of the poor. Unions and the middle class sending the country and world into an economic crisis. We've lost our souls when we continue to fight two wars that have cost us $3 trillion and cost thousands of American lives, Iraqi lives, Afghani lives, and others. We must stand up for social and economic justice. I know we're here to celebrate the life of my father and commemorate my father, but we need to try to live like him, to love like him, and to care like him. Yes, my father had a dream. It was a dream, he said, that was deeply embedded in the American dream. The problem is the American dream of 50 years ago was two cars, a house, two kids, and a dog named Spot has turned into a nightmare for millions, for millions of Americans. There is no house because they have no jobs and therefore can't give their kids the proper tools to prepare them for a better life than they had. So I submit that we need a new America dream, a dream of interconnectedness, a dream of mutual purpose, a dream of caring and being responsible for each other. We need to live up to the promise sketched out into that majestically held that majestically held and that statue that we call the Statue of America, which says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. We need to understand that none of us are free, are free until all of us can be free. We need to have a new spirit of cooperation in this country based on love, respect, and sensitivity to the least of these among us. That is what my father wanted for this country. And so while I am proud of this great memorial to my father, I hope it will serve as a catalyst for us to block, adopt his ideals and beliefs, a renewal of decency, sensitivity, and love. Love he so often talked about. We must stand up for that, that justice because now is the time for all humankind. And so America, this is our chance. Yes, is. This is our opportunity to show the world of our greatness, to throw off the shackles of all of the conservative policies that exclude masses of people. Glory. We must finally get rid of racism. That's right. Today at this great moment in our collective history, I ask you to join with me as the head of the Martin Luther King Center for Nonviolent Social Change to stand up for justice and social uh, unrest. Everywhere we must build a brighter day for everyone and create the opportunity for people to once again acquire wealth. And therefore, we will ultimately triumph over those triple evils of poverty, racism, and militarism that my father championed often. Let us embrace dad's legacy. Let us celebrate dad's life. But more importantly, let us live as Dr. King envisioned when he described how all of our destinies are tied together. We are linked together. I can't be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can't be what you ought to be until I'm what I ought to be because our destinies are tied together, is what he said. And so America, today let us meet the challenge to finally embrace and become what we know we must become, and that is the beloved community. So no matter how far we have to go, and we probably do have a long way to go, it may get worse before it gets better. Do not get any ways tired. Do not get any ways tired. 
because we have truly come much too far from where we started. You see, nobody ever told any of us that our roads would be easy, but I know our God, our God, our God did not bring any of us this far to leave us. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you always.